what's up guys, Shockwave640 here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers 2007 movie Hardtop. And of course this is just a direct repaint of the Cybertron, I think his name is Hardtop, I don't remember what the Cybertron one's name is, it's similar to this one, except it's got in like Seacon colors with a little bit of green and it looks really stupid to be honest. I love the coloration for this guy and I want to get the Beachcomber one just because, why not? But all that boring nonsense aside, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do the voting first because it, uh, nobody really wants to vote. And I'm assuming it's because nobody even, there's some people that don't know that there's a voting, maybe. But I'm going to go ahead and do the, get the voting over with before we do the review. So as always, there's an I right up there at the top and you can choose who you want to be uh, seen in the next review. And we have Voyager, Evasion Mode, Optimus Prime. And we have the uh, the Lego Construct he Construct Heroes, I think they were called, uh, Captain Phasma. So you can see Lego Captain Phasma or Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. The eye is up here at the corner of the screen. And you can choose to see who will be voted the next time I put out a video. Or who will be reviewed. What am I trying to say? Who will be viewed the next time I put out a video. So, that aside, let's bring in Hardtop here and get the video going. Now, Hardtop actually was in the movie comics, the movie IDW comics. He is a character in there, and apparently he is the one who shot out Bumblebee's voice box that makes him have to speak through the radio, which is kind of cool, to be honest, <laughs> that I have the guy that shot my least favorite Transformers character. Anyways, size comparisons, we've got Commander Megatron. Just so you can see, these guys are pretty much commander-ish size they're like in between commander and deluxe uh we here we have the reborns gundam because i haven't done a size comparison with this guy in a very long time ever since i broke it you see <laughs> i broke its knee off in its own review so setting the reborns off to the side and here we have my high mock custom which i did customize with the uh with the gunpla arm arms battle kit and you can see how that scales there. None of these size comparisons I ever do make any sense. So, if you're new to the channel, Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, so, let's get in here and close and take a look. This is, in fact, a Decepticon, but there are no Decepticon symbols on him, which is really weird. The only Decepticon symbol he has is on a Cyber Planet key, which I will show in a second. I'm going to go ahead and pull off his weapon. It just plugs in there the via the standard 5mm peg. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the details. So you can see this is an open top. It's got the windows there, some mirrors, and um, the doors right there. Coming up front, you got the black there for the push bumper. You got silver there for the lights, silver up here for the floodlights. You got some nice, like, dark olive green going on the bottom there and on these back struts with the back wheels. A little bit gappy here in the back, but it doesn't bother me all that much. They did kind of sort of try to mold in some, like, exhaust pipe and some tail lights that you could paint in if you want to. Uh, you can just see gaps right there for his legs. Coming to the top, you just got some silver and some hazard striping, which does go right underneath the uh, the port there. Coming to the bottom, you can kind of see his hands there. You can see some copywriting stuff, and that's pretty much it. And you can just see the back of his head sitting in there, and there actually is a little chair in there. See, there it is, shining off of the plastic right there. There's a little chair in here, and you could probably fit something like a Titan Master or something inside of here. I never really tried. But yeah, so I'm setting him right there and taking a look at his gun. His gun is very cool. Nice uh, lime, not lime green. Nice olive green paint on a black machine gun. This is in its machine gun mode. And you can see this is the Cyber uh, cyber Planet Key gimmick. It's pretty basic. I mean, there's nothing too crazy going on. It's all, all the paints up here. The silver, the yellow, the green. And then the rest of it's just black. And then he comes with his Cyber Planet Key, which is painted... It's in a uh, solid black plastic with some green paint going along the side, some silver here, and some silver, and it says S7, and then there's a cube, and that same S7 with the cube is there on that side, and there on this side, it's a little bit faded off, because this is an old toy. Uh, if anybody knows what that S7, if anybody knows what this cyber key even is, because I've never seen it before besides now, you can see the septicon symbol there on the back. If anybody knows what that S7 or this the Cyber Planet key in general, if anybody knows what that means, uh, let me down let me know down in the comment section. 
And you can see this is definitely the shape of a Decepticon symbol, very vaguely with the little sound wave antennas. As if you didn't know, the Decepticon symbol is based off of early concept art for Soundwave Space, which is quite, which is kind of cool, because Soundwave actually was meant to be the Decepticon leader. I, I, and I'm pretty sure the Autobot logo is based off of early concept of either Optimus Prime or Ironhide, one of the two. I want to say it was Ironhide because I believe he was meant to be the Autobot leader, but I have no idea. I know the Decepticon one was supposed to be Soundwave, but I'm not sure about the Autobot one. <sighs> Anyways, let's get down to the transformation because this is a basic class or no, scout class. Yeah, this is a scout class, so they are very, very simple to transform. We're going to start with the legs and work our way up. So what you want to do is untab the legs. You can see little tabs there on the bottoms of the doors and these little slots here on the bottoms of his feet. Let's go ahead and fold that all the way down just like that for now now what you're going to do is come here to these front wheels unclip them bring them out you can see there's just a little post right there and it just fits into that little nub and clips in so just bring those up just like so and then close them all the way up here at the top now what you're going to do is crack open these doors you can see there's a tab there and a little slot there those tab in this is probably going to flop down because it is on quite a loose hinge, but it doesn't matter later on. You're going to rotate him like this. Bring this section down, and you can see here is that chair that we saw. So bring this up, and then this is going to clip around this section right here. Uh, all this is going to clip on, just like so. Bring this section up, rotate him at the waist separate his legs and then bring these sections down flat to the foot and there we have the lower body all done so now what you're going to do is just bring the arms down at this black hinge right there bring the arm down and then just straighten out the arm and this is the weird part about this guy that I don't quite understand again if anybody knows this and knows why he has this please tell me it seems like when you're supposed to transform him you're supposed to just continue bringing the arm and tap it into place right there. So that makes it where he doesn't have an elbow joint and it's just like the stereotypical robot arm. Why though? I mean, you can give him perfectly good elbow joints to have a perfect degree bend right here. I mean, why would you do that? <laughs> it confuses me. I honestly don't know why. Unless there's some kind of secret mode or something that I'm missing out on, which I highly doubt. <clears throat> but there we pretty much have Cybertron hardtop or 07 movie hardtop in his robot mode. And bringing in Commander Megatron, who is tripping over himself. Here we can see how he scales here. He is taller than Hardtop, but Hardtop is much, much beefier and blockier. And bringing in the Reborn's Gundam. So you can see how he looks there with it. And then bringing in the High Mock Custom right there. I think I reviewed the High Mock already. I don't remember. I know I haven't reviewed all this stuff on it, but I do believe I have reviewed the High Mock. So you can see how they look together. Setting that off to the side. Um, now let's go on to articula details and articulation. I always forget which order it is. Uh, coming down to the face, a very, very nice looking face with the yellow visor and the silver on the side of the head. And, uh... It's nothing there really on the back. You can just see where there's a faux back of the head camera. I mean, that kind of looks like a face, too. With, like, some Ultron mouth ditch going on and just one single eye. So that's kind of weird. And he's just got a silver face. Very cool. Would have been nice if that little thing on his chin was painted either black or uh, green to look like a chin strap or a little beard, but it's not. So, oh well. And you get some nice silver and yellow there on the section, which is supposed to be the back of the chair. So you can see the chair molded in there. Uh, whenever I was a younger kid, I always used this. <laughs> I always did the stupid thing and pretended like this was some kind of computer or something he had on his chest. I don't know why, but that's always what I did. Uh, nothing really going on here. It's just a bunch of black plastic with some nice molded details. Other details you already saw in uh, vehicle mode. You got some green paint there, which is starting to fade away. Uh, the server paint on the bottom, which does get scratched up quite easily. You can definitely see it on this, <clears throat> on this side because those are the bottoms of his toes. On the back, his legs are a little bit hollow, but they're hollow for a reason. And other than that, I mean, it's not really a backpack. He's just got the doors hanging off of his arms of the 
window frame and then these wheels, which I've always loved it whenever Transformers have wheels hanging off of them. Or they have visible wheels. I've always loved that. Now, articulation. Uh, this guy's head can rotate a full 360 degrees. It is just on a simple swivel. His shoulders aren't a ball joint, but it's one of those weird limited ball joints. So, get a little bit of wiggly move, uh, wiggly waggly movement. Can go out about that far, but if you use a transformation hinge, it can go all the way up and more. But it looks a little bit weird whenever you do it, but it's there. And of course, it can do a, well, almost can do a full 360. The, uh, the mirror right here, oh, that, is that the mirror? I don't think that's the mirror. No, that, yeah, that's the mirror. The mirror does get in the way. It bumps into the hinge, but you can bring his arm out to bypass that if you so please. And then he does have a full bend there at the elbow if you wish to do so with that. He does have a waist swivel for transformation, very nice and tight. Although it does break in half pretty easily, but it's okay because you can just clip it back together. It is just a mushroom peg. His legs are on a ball joint, so they will go that far forward, about that far backward before they start colliding with things. Um, about that far out and get a little bit of wiggly movement and the knees are on a ball joint but don't really do much ball joint stuff because it's a square thigh inside of a square hole so you get full deep bend due to transformation and that's pretty much all the knee is going to get you really I mean yeah I mean it's just it's too limited of a, of a ball joint and the feet do nothing so he's pretty posable for a scout class I mean uh, he definitely does not skip on articulation and He's just a fun little transformer to fiddle with. Um, in terms of accessories, he does come with his gun, which you can just plug in to his hand here. And he can just wield that and use this as a machine gun. A little bit heavy for him. I mean, it just kind of flops down a little bit. It is a little bit heavy because uh, the cyber can, uh, cyber can, the cyber key thing. Uh, I usually like to plug it in this hand if he will hold it. He doesn't want to accept it. I usually plug it into this hand so that this uh, section here is on the inside. And then I'm assuming the Cyber Planet key, or the reason why his arm tabs outward like that is so that there's enough room for the key to fit. Which also, if you want to do the key thing, you do have to plug it into this hand or it, the key won't fit. And then, Although you don't have to have the key in. Basically what you do is straighten out his arm so that you have the, uh, the gun. We're going to try to do this. You grab your Cyber Planet key, you plug it into the back where the arrow is facing forward, and you get, there you go, you get a flip out sniper barrel, which is quite, quite cool. Uh, mine sags down just ever so slightly, or I think it's the uh, machine gun barrel that does. Yeah, the machine gun barrel uh, sags, the sniper barrel is pointing up a little bit. And that is pretty freaking cool. If you want to, you can take out the cyber uh, the cyber key and still have the sniper cannon out. You just, if you want to transform it back, you're just going to fold it back and push it down and it will click into place. While this does look cool, I usually prefer to have him with the machine gun just because this looks a little bit too long and thin for my taste, especially from the top. It just looks a little bit weird. And I think there might be a design flaw. I'm not sure if it's purposely done like this, but I'm pretty sure this section right here is the iron sight. And I'm pretty sure the iron sight goes on the top of the gun barrel. And I know it's not built wrong because whenever this comes back, you can see here this gun barrel. This is all just one solid piece. You see when this swings back, it gets caught into that little hole and stops. If it was the other way around, it would stop like right here and the gun barrel would be pointing way up. So I know it's not constructed wrong. It's constructed perfectly fine. It's just, why is the iron sight on the bottom of a gun? I mean, I know it's not for any kind of purpose. I mean, when you have it down like that, it doesn't really do anything. It's just kind of, unless they're trying to make a blend in back there, but that's not doing a very good job. Uh, there's a way that you can actually get this out without the server key. I used to do it all the time, but I don't remember how to do it. So we're just going to extend his arm there, flip out the gun barrel. So it is kind of cool that he does come with the sniper. He can't hold it with two hands just because of the way his articulation works. So we're just going to bring that back into uh, into its machine gun form because that is what this what the what the gun's called on the box art for the guy. It is called his machine gun. It says machine gun transforms into sniper or something like that. Uh, another cool little thing that I figured out, I'm not entirely sure if this was intended, I'm pretty sure it was not, but you actually can fit the Cyber Planet key right here between the wheels. 
You just wedge it in there and you can store the key there on his back if you wish to do so. I usually have it there so I don't lose it because I've only got one of these keys left because my other two hard tops got short over time because they belonged to my brothers and so did the keys. I used to have two of the keys but I don't know what happened to the other one so I just have the one cyber key. So well guys, this was the Transformers 2007 movie Cybertron Hardtop and I am Shockwave 640. Well guys, I will be seeing you later so uh, don't forget to vote and I will be seeing you later my little logicons. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.